of your program, African Child um, Show, Cultural Delusion. We have another guest in the house, and she's going to introduce herself now. Hello. Can you introduce yourself to everyone out there? My name is Anandji Ramise I attend Sakura Catholic College. I'm 14 years old. The topic of today is child trafficking. What can you say about child trafficking? Child trafficking can be said to be the enslavement or sale of children in exchange for money or other financial benefits. It can also be said to be the transportation or harboring of children with the means of with the use of coercion or force against the person's will. Child trafficking is synonymous and rampant with Africa due to the prevalence of poverty and corruption. Child trafficking is a bad habit and should, should be eradicated in Africa. What are the causes of child trafficking? We have so many causes of child trafficking, but child trafficking, the main cause of child trafficking is poverty. Poverty, when poverty sings the sound, nobody wants to lose it. So this can be said to cause child trafficking in one. Parents who, parents who are not rich or maybe they find it difficult to make ends meet for their children will have to go into it. They will want to go to it any way of making money for themselves to, to be able to take care of their to other members of the family. For example, if a man who is poor is in our side, is our hot, is us, then his, his friend comes to him and say, Guy, this and this and this and this, and introduce his child trafficking to him. He might just take one of his children and then sell off, then collect his money, then thinking that he has done the right thing, not knowing that it's the wrong thing. What do you still have to say on child trafficking? The cause of child trafficking is broken homes. When two couples are not on talking terms, they don't have time for their children, they leave them to maybe like if the child should go and meet the father, the father say, Can meet your mother, leave me alone. The others say, can meet your father, you know, so they go, they wander in the streets where they might fall into the hands of child traffickers. Most, moreover, children, parents are meant to take care of the children. If they, they know they are not going to take care of them, why didn't they go into it? They should, they should have left them to God to take care of them. Instead, they call the, the child to life and they, they are now neglecting them and not having time for them. Number, the third one is poor governance. If when a governance, when the government of a particular place is not well, is not well taken care of, the leadership is not is not as it should go, then the 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 place of society would be prone to arm robbers, child traffickers, and people who just come there, dead, like leave because they know nobody is going to query them for doing the wrong thing. Also. Apart from things I mentioned earlier, child traffickers also involved in smug, smuggling, foreign nine. They do all sorts of things that are not supposed to be part of an African child. Then, large family size and poor family planning also leads to child trafficking. When there are too much of children in the family, they give back to the ones they don't know they're not going to take off. For example, a man having for six wives yeah. and then 20 children will not have time to take care of every one of them. Will not have the time to give them equal love or share things that they're supposed to know with them. So the children, some of them are just wonder of go and like might go to their friend's house. Then instead of them to be under their children who under their parents rather to take care of them, guard them, give them the moral values, what they should know and what and what they should do and what they should not do. This could also lead to child trafficking. Because when they wander out to the streets, they fall into a of ritualists and they might take them anywhere for either church people to use them as outmates or other things. Then lack of awareness under the grassroots area and rural areas. When the when they are saying something about church trafficking, a Yoruba person who is not learned and who did not go to school, you don't accept such a person to understand what they're saying. So instead of he might to to maybe go to someone that is damaged to explain the things they're saying to him or due to ignorance and maybe fear of maybe the person might talk, they don't know how to go and then they don't know they are killing themselves. When 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 one of their friends should just come and say, I'll take this child to Lagos or maybe somewhere else, it should be educated. 
they leave, they leave the child thinking that the child will come back with money. Not that yes. maybe the, the person actually took him out to be his housemaid or some other things, which is also a form of child trafficking. We can words of a friend of mine he says it's it is good to help people but it's more fulfilling and more blessed to be kind to children so i say everyone of us should love children and we should think of a way to help them and stop this act of trafficking thank you very much Esther. we've come to the end of today's show on the topic child trafficking esther has really spoken on child trafficking how it affects the children and some ignorant people who do not know about child trafficking. So the media, television stations, radio stations, newspapers, make noise. Let people know that child trafficking is wrong. People should be assigned to villages in order to educate the villagers that about child trafficking. Please stop abusing children. They are spiritual leaders. Thank you so much for watching the show. I am Sean Koshredo Ushago. Join us in time to station. Thank you very much for the game. Bye bye. I am Sean Koshrado Obishoko. Our guest of today is speaking on the topic child abuse and neglect. And she's going to introduce herself now. Hello. Good day. Can you introduce yourself to everybody? My name is Patricia Patricia Abishoko. I'm an indigenous of Panama State. I'm 11 years old. I'm currently in Jesus. The topic of today is child abuse and neglect. What can you say about it? Before I go further, child abuse is the crime of harming a child emotionally, physically, or socially. Then neglect means to fail to take care of someone properly. Before I go further, child abuse can is more than a is more than bruises and broken bones. Physical abuse can be seen as the as the visible parts and signs of child abuse. Then the the one that leaves long lasting scars in the in the mind in the mind of a child is that of the emotional abuse. Emotional abuse leaves long lasting scars. When I mean emotional abuse, I mean when you tell a child a child over and over again that that child is worthless, that child is of no use, stupid, or or is an idiot. That that thing you've said in that child leaves long lasting scars in it and can never leave and can never leave the child's mind throughout his life. And also, child abuse, child abuse are more from, and not more from strangers. Child abuse can be more from relatives or family members or people close to, or, or, or other people close to family. In the sense that child abuse is not only from strangers. Child abuse can also occur in the home. Like, have you ever seen a father sleeping with his daughter? Yes, that means, that means that man is abusing his own daughter. And why child abuse and why child abuse is being respected in the is being taking place in the home. It means that child abuse, more of child abuse is has been taking place in the home. I go further that even child even abusers, even child even people that have been abused grow up to be abusers. That is child Abuse should then go off to, ab to be abusers in the sense that maybe a child of, of 15 is, is, is being lured to prost prostitution. Then, when that person goes, it's, it's part and parcel of that person or the, or the girl. And I say child abuse is taking place by bad people. Not only bad people take place in child abuse, child abuse can also be taking place by people who have been abused before. Like I said, they were going to repeat the cycle of the abuse to, as they have been abused when they are in their early stage as children. How does child abuse affect the children? Child abuse affects the children emotionally, mentally, and socially. That means if that child is abused, that child don't have the courage to go outside and play like other children do play. It affects the child emotionally because that child will have you not have a stare thinking thinking faculty. That child cannot think right or cannot think straight or even or even 
pay attention in the class, right? Teacher? Even if you send that child to school, be best assured that you are making a mistake of sending that child to school because that child is not is absent-minded at that point in time. And also, child abuse also affects a child academically, like I just said, that the child does not have any thinking faculty. The child will only be based on, oh my god, I've lost this. The child will be led on daily basis here. And also, child abuse affects the child in so many ways, in the style and life of the way the child lives. That is, when I mean the style and life of, way, of the way the child lives, that, that child will not be able to play around, do things like other children. That child do things abnormally. That child does not think right or think straight. That child does not look in herself as a child. He looks down on his or herself. What are the causes of child abuse? The number one cause of child abuse in Africa is poverty. I mean the number one cause of child abuse is poverty in the sense that many parents in, in Africa don't have money to train their child to school. So in this case, they send their children to go and hug into prostitution or to go and hug in the streets, which is very wrong. And which is very wrong. And from that case, that child continue, from hugging, the child goes into doubt, from doubt to armed robbers. And you see, this little mistake that the truth that the parent has made to send their child into hawking because of lack of finance, this can also make the children to start disturbing people at night. That when I mean disturbing people at night, you also understand what I mean. Arm robbery, prostitution, and all and all kinds of thefts or robbery. And also, the second cause of child abuse is bad friends. When you keep bad company. They want to convince you that this child you are taking care of, this child is not a child. Or uh, moreover, this girl you are taking care of, or uh, this your niece you are taking care of, this she's not your child, so you don't need to take care of her. She does not need all these gifts to your children. You all you only need to beat her, anything she does, you deal with her, so that she's going to do this, she's going to do that. And by so doing, you are abusing the child. And those bad friends can keep convincing you and destroy your home completely. That is, it can also lead to broken home. Mm. Another cause of child abuse is favoritism. Mm. When I mean favoritism, I mean a parent liking one child more than the other. That this way, that child that is not like to be emotionally disturbed, that child will not will not feel like the other children. That child will always be like, oh my god, my mommy like me, my mommy likes. Um, favor more than the other. My only favors this more than more than me. So that child will not be in himself. Even at school, that child will not pay attention to what they teach in class. Mm -hmm. What do you think can be done to stop it? What we can do to stop child abuse, it goes to the government. Not only to the government, but also parents and individuals like us. When I mean that, I mean the government should to enforce laws that any child found on the streets should be arrested and taken to the parents and the parents should pay the penalty of the abused child. And also, the parents also should try to treat every other children like their own children. When I mean so, I mean what is good for the eyes is also good for the nose. That means what is good for her, the other children, also what is good for her own children is also good for the other children. That is, the, the parents should try as much as possible to help to help children in need, to even help their housemates, to treat them fairly so that when they go out there they can't talk about you recklessly or they can't talk about you in a bad way. How can the government help the neglected children? The government can help the neglected children in terms of giving the parents on um, giving the parents employment. Then I mean that I mean you know the great cause of, of child abuse in Africa is poverty. So when when the government give employment to to the parents, the parents in their little knowledge can send their children to school and provide for their family needs or their three square meals and fend for themselves and their family. What about governmental organizations? Yes. Even the NGOs too can help the neglected children. But even the orphans, when you see them on the streets, they should at least help them take take them to school if they have no parents, send them in a public school or something, or even if they can't take them to their house, at least they should send a, they should make up a place for them to stay and for them to rest their heads so that when the children grow up, they will go back and thank them in return.
parents, you don't need to give your child out to anybody to train for you. You give birth to the child. You draw the child to the world. So he or she deserves all the rights, all the attention, needs all the attention, all the parental care. And if you know you are not ready to take care of any child, you don't need to give birth to any child now. Most African children, their parents look down on them. And by this, I mean their parents don't bother to find out their talents. They don't have time for their children. They are really not there for their children. They don't know what their children like. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they want in life. All they know is my child must do this. My child must do that. Good to have you. I welcome you to our favorite program, African Child. African Child. African Child, the masterpiece from the inkwell of Kola Obadimu Jr. Showing on this station. African Child! This is African Child and we're at the station. In the studio today we have Patricia who is talking on the topic child abuse and neglect. Patricia, do you think teachers, the students, is part of child abuse? Yes, that's part of child abuse. That's part of that. Where I mean, and I mean so. I mean, this the teachers should not try to do so because because of marks to to be given. Even the students, so they should have their own thinking faculty. They should think that this man is not helping me. But at the end of the day, some of the teachers wouldn't give them their mark after sleeping with them. They won't give them their mark. And so these children, when when a teacher says something like that to them, they should go and report to the to the principal or other teachers around them who, who they think can help them in the situation. Do you still have anything to say on child abuse? Yes. I have the types of child abuse. There are types of child abuse. There are emotional child abuse, physical child abuse, and um, child neglect. When I mean the emotional child abuse, when you keep telling the child, the child that over and over again is stupid, is worthless, that child will never, ever, ever leave that thing, never ever remove that thing from his mind because that child thinks, yes, I'm worthless, I'm not a human being, I'm a fool. So they used to tell me every time and every day that I'm a fool, I'm not educated, I'm not I'm this and that. So that is going to leave a long lasting scar in the life of that child. That as if you have cemented the place and the year after you go and match it, you know this, the, the foot, your foot you have put there will be, will be there for life. That's how the mind of a child is. It's very soft. Is it in all cases that we are saying affects children? Not in all cases. It depends on how you treat the child. If you are maltreating the child and telling the child that he's stupid and this, this, the child will think yes that he's stupid. But don't you think determination when child able to prove to you that he's not stupid? Don't you think that comes from? Yes, those are children that are educated. Those are the ones that are knowledgeable. When I mean so, I mean children that at least have the knowledge. But some children at the age of five, they give them out to to people to stay with. And this is not right because it is child abuse. So those people that are giving them out to stay with, they will not educate the child. But if the child maybe has stayed in school for some years and the parents doesn't have to stay with him or her and takes him or her to the person to leave, that child can have a knowledge of what to do. That child can have, that child can have a lot of a knowledge of determination. That child can be determined in him or herself. I don't know physical abuse can you Yeah, physical abuse can be seen as the visible part of, of child abuse. Whereby because the child maybe stole some piece of meat from the pot, you beat the child to get him that the child is bleeding in the nose, the mouth and everywhere. And you see marks on the body of the child and all that. Why do you think the parents abuse their children? I think so because some parents are not focus on their children. Jazz is just business, business, business. Some parents always think of themselves before their children, whereby they know that their own time has passed to become something great in the future. Or oh, yes, they are great, they are something, they are already something great in the future. Yes, but they have to give their children some chance to be so. Can you talk about the age of housemen? They are treated unfairly and that is not right. Even housemen, even, it's not right for, uh, family to get a housemate. Actually, you have children who can help you do that. Why do you get, go and get uh, another fellow child like your 
own children. So, like, are you trying to say that it's illegal to have outmate? It is illegal to have outmate under 18. Even if you want to have outmate under 18, at least you treat that child fairly. You at least share the work. Your, my child will do this, you do this, my child will do this, and other things. And you also send that child to school, so that child is going to be educated. That child will feel like, yes, I'm at home, this is my home. You yeah, are my mother, this is my father, this is my brothers and sisters. But when you treat that child unfairly, that child is like, God, where am I? Where's, where's my parents? Can my parents take care of me? Even if they can't take care of me, at least let me just be with them for once. That's how that child will be thinking. Even the parents that have housemates at home, they should try and call that child is or are they, not referring to that child as a housemate or an house servant. This is not right because that child will always, if maybe you go outside and ask the child's name, the child will say I'm a housemate because he's always, he's all, he's all, all already used to that name. So, to, so parents should try to, parents should try to have conscience in themselves and call their, and call their housemates by their, by their names, not calling them housemates or out servants or insulting them. And emphatically too, nobody, nobody has the right to employ a child as a housemate under 18. What do you think parents neglect their children? People neglect their children because not most neglect their children are not their biological children. Most of them are not their maybe they are housemates. So they neglect them because of, maybe they are treating them very well before and so Bad friends intervened, that's intervention. Bad friends intervened and they start treating the, the child badly because he or she is not their biological child. Do you think adoption of children is right? In a way it is right and in a way it is not right. By the time you adopt a child and you get and next you have your own child, you will now feel like this child is no longer my child, I already have my own child, I can match with the child anyhow. Then you now, then you now involved in involve favoritism. You like your own child more than the other, whereby you already adopted the child. So this is not right. It, so, in a way, adoption is not right, as like I've said, in a way, and in a way it's right. If that, if that you can hold firm and treat both children and treat both children well, then it is right. But if you can't treat both children well, and you are treating the adopted child unfairly, or you are maltreating him, him or her, then adoption is not right. My name is Omo Mioba Dimo. I'm from Nigeria, precisely from Omo States. The topic of today is the price of an African girl. What can you say about that? Before I say anything, first, I would like my people to know who an African girl is. An African girl is a girl below the age of 18 years whose parents are African. And secondly, I would like to define the word pride itself. See, the word pride means the feelings of your worth and respect for yourself. So when we talk about the pride of an African girl, it means a level of decency, a manner of dressing, a virginity as a girl, a level of respect for the elderly women and even her peers, a level of organization, a level of maturity and understanding towards life, the way she reacts to matters, and a kind of attitude in society. See, are supposed to be the pride of an African girl. But nowadays, reverse is the case. Before I even talk about those that are in the higher institutions, I would like to start with those that are in the primary and secondary school. You see, a girl of 12 years who is already living the life of a married woman, 
she has already engaged herself in all manners of rubbish, like having a love affair, having sex, sending erotic messages, watching erotic movies, and even reading erotic magazines and novels. And <laughs> when a girl of 12 years is already doing all this, what will become of her and her generation? Nothing good. Because first, she will start by disobeying her parents at home. She will start by disobeying her parents at home, her teachers in school, and even the elderly ones in her environment. And she will start losing concentration on her academics and her career, or even anything that will make her dream a reality. And all she will be thinking of is how to get the latest clothes in town, how to get the artists videos on her phone or a laptop, how to catch up with the most handsome guy in town. At the age of 18, 20, her rest is already falling, without even giving birth to any child. And it is this same set of girls that I see put on uncovered clothes, going about advertising their second-hand bodies. <laughs> I mean, bodies that you a girl cannot even see and appreciate, not talk of the elderly ones or the best out there. But what can the righteous do when the condition is destroyed? I mean, what can the elderly ones in the society do when these kids are already exposed to all kinds of indecency from their tender age? You see them at the age of 21, 22, they cannot even count the number of guys that are slept with them. And yet, they call themselves African girls. But I want everyone out there to know that losing your virginity before marriage is not our culture. Because if we look into the lives of our mothers and grandmothers, those are the people we can proudly call the African women, or the virtuous women. Because most of them were being disvirgined by their husbands. And it was even after their bride price has been paid. <laughs> Let us now come back to our own generation. Before you can count 10 virgins out of 100 of girls, you must have walked around the old world. Let me now go to the level of those that are in the higher institution. You see some ladies in the universities, when they want to leave the house, they put on all these uh, shirts, nice clothes, so that their parents will not know what they are doing in school. And when they get to school, they start putting on uncovered clothes. Some of them, some of them, they have their boyfriends, so they are so-called boyfriends, but they still go about to sleep with different men all in exchange of money, just because they want to put on the latest clothes in town, they want to use the, the latest phone. And even the Bible says all these things are vanity. And vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Girls, we are the future leaders, we are the mothers of tomorrow, so why should we give out our body in exchange of money? That's on one side. Because now we can see the life of some girls who claim to be saints, and who claims to be decent, and yet all the guys on the surface of the earth has their phone numbers and their data at hand. For crying out loud, I say, girl, if a guy comes to approach you, and you know you don't want to have anything to do with him, let him go now. Why are you exchanging number with him? Why are you calling him? Why do you go to his house? You don't need to send him text messages. Like, my daddy will ask you, do you think a guy that has had the mind of going out with you will be a true friend. He can never be a true friend. Like the uh, popular yoga adage we see, I say, lady, when you know you don't want to have anything to do with a guy, it is better you give him, let him go. Because the guy, no matter the conviction, no matter everything, all he will think is how to sleep with you. So as a lady, I want us to make ourselves an icon to be reckoned with. The Lord has made our body his holy temple. So let us use it to the glory of God and to the help of humanity and to the help of the next generation. What is the pride of an African girl? The pride of an African girl is her keeping herself. Keeping herself, keeping her body, not using her body anyhow in exchange of money or not allowing any guys to use her body anyhow. She keep herself for the husband that will get married to her. What destroys the pride of an African girl? The things that destroy the pride of an African girl is when an African girl does not have all these qualities I have said earlier on, like having a virgin, an educated girl, level of organization, all those things they destroy the pride of an African girl. How can an African girl maintain her pride? The way an African girl can maintain her pride is one, 
vibrating with the positive people, not allowing our negative peers to influence her, not allowing societal influence to affect her, and even the movies she watch or the kind of books she read. How can the parents help? The parents have a lot to do in this. One, they should try and check into the lives of their children whenever they are at home before going back to school. And even try to check them in school. Because most parents don't have time for their kids. Most parents that are civil servants, they go in the morning, come back in the night. They don't even know what they do. They don't need the kind of friends they keep. And again, our parents should let us speak our dialects. Because that also affects the lives of these children. When you don't allow them to speak their dialects, you want them to speak uh, this English. I want you to speak English, I don't want you to speak Yoruba. So definitely, at times, the language you speak will determine the kind of culture you want to put on. Another masterpiece from the inkwell of Kola Obadimu Jr. Showing on this station. African Child! This is still African Child on your TV station. And in the house today we have Mumi. We're talking on the topic, an African, the pride of an African girl. African girls out there, sit back and learn on how to maintain your pride. So Mumi... Who are the people that help and African girls maintain a pride? The parents, the society, this uh, music, this music and famous producers too. They also have a lot to do. They have to check all these movies and music before producing them because those that are in the art world, they are there to correct the society and not to corrupt the society. And you find out that these days, most of the movies and music that they produce, it's affecting the life of these kids. So I want the music producers and the, the music producers to also check into the kind of music and movies they produce. What about girls when you take back girls? Those ones, I'll say they don't know what they are doing. Because as a girl, why can't you let people imitate you? Let others imitate you. You must, not, you must learn how to let others imitate you, not to imitate them all the time. You can also influence your peers positively. You, know, it doesn't have, you don't need to wait for them to come and influence you negatively all the time. You too, you need to influence them positively. What can you say about country school relationship? Do you think it's right? No. Why? It is not right in the sense that <laughs> the guy in secondary school, you yourself you are in secondary school, you guys are not matured enough. And again, when you look at it very well, a girl of 18 years is more mature than a guy of 20 years. So those that are having relationship in secondary school, it doesn't make any sense. You get you people just lose concentration on your studies and all you'll be thinking of is how to hang around, how to meet each other, how to do all kind of rubbish. What about university girls who get intimidated by their lecturer? It is when you want to be intimidated by your lecturers that you be intimidated. We have so many decent girls out there. Even their lecturers, they do come to them, if you don't sleep with me, you will not pass. Yes, they still have their way. So that they report to the school authority or they report to their parents. But some, it's because they want themselves to be 
stimulated and you will not even take any step about it. Yes, the lecturer said I should come and sleep with him for maths. What is there? If it is just for maths, uh, let me do it now. What else can you say about the pride of an African girl? You see, I will talk about pride of an African girl. Like I have said earlier on, the qualities of an African girl, the virtues of an African girl, is for us to have all those qualities I've mentioned earlier on. One, keeping herself till marriage, not uh, using her body, putting on her body, exchange of money. And you even see some girls, they will tell you, uh, because my boyfriend cannot provide for my needs, I have to go out there. For kind of like, why should he provide for your needs? He's not your parents, he's not your father, he's not. And as a girl, when you start asking guys for money, that means you are doing trade by pata, money for hand, back from brown. And at the end of the day, when such a guy starts misbehaving, you don't even have the mouth, you don't have the courage to tell him, I am your girlfriend, I am your wife, this is how you should treat me. Because, you know, if he should leave you, that means that's the end of everything. No more latest clothes in town, no more latest phone. So I want all girls to carry themselves. We should not feel inferior. We should not believe to ourselves. We are the future leaders. We are the mothers of tomorrow. So we should make ourselves an icon to be reckoned with. How does the environment affect the pride of an African girl? A lot. Because these kids, they see a lady of 25, 26 years because of what she's putting on. And they'll tell you, I want to be like sister this. I want to be like auntie that. I like the kind of clothes she's putting on. I like the kind, I like how when she receives calls, the way she talks on the phone. So I want to be like, I want to imitate her. So the society and the environment, so they are contributing a lot to the lives of these children by putting on uncovered clothes. It is what these kids see they want to do. Like for example now, a girl of 25 years in the university comes to visit her parents and a younger one, maybe a girl too, we see and say, oh sister, I like your clothes, I like your mini skirts, I like your trousers, I like your chain. And the next thing she'll start thinking of is how to get this kind of clothes, how to put on uncovered clothes as well. What about those that choose wrong people as their own model? Those that choose wrong people as their own models, I'll tell them they don't know what they are doing. Because you have so many people out there, good people, positive people out there, that you can choose as real models. Not the negative ones that will influence your life, that will spoil your career, your future for you. There are so many negative people out there that you can imitate, that you can take as your real model. What about those that are innocent? I will not count anybody to be innocent. Because, like my mom will always tell you, a girl or a child that knows where to put food, <laughs> can differentiate between wrong and right. So I will not call anybody innocent or I will not put the blame on anybody. And again, I want all girls out there to always live their lives as if they don't have parents. After all, we have so many people out there that does not have parents and yet they are living a meaningful life. When we do this, that is when we we not have any cause to put blame on anybody, even when we fall or fail. Because because some people come and say, yeah, it's because my parents does not have time for me. It's because they don't give me money at home. You don't have any excuse to give out your body in exchange of money. Because we still have some people that does not have parents. And yes, they are living in a life. What about girls that are abused by their parents? That's, I want the government to look into that. And I want all these NGOs, the British Council, UNICEF to look into this. I want the government to look into that. And parents, you don't need to give your child out to anybody to train for you. You give birth to the child. You brought the child to the world. So he or she deserves all the rights, all the atten needs all the attention, all the parental care. And if you know you are not ready to take care of any child, you don't need to give birth to any child now. What about girls that have not lost their pride? All is not finished for them. As they are listening to me now, they can still take a new leap. When you think about everything they've done, every, though it's a psychological trauma, but at the same time, they can still take a new leap, pray to God to forgive them, beg their parents, change their lifestyle, the kind of clothes they put on, the kind of friends they keep. And by this, what advice can you give to girls out there? My advice for girls out there is one, they should learn how to carry out themselves because ladies, we don't need to believe to ourselves now. Like I have said, we are the future leaders. 
we are the mothers of tomorrow, the wife material, the future material. So let everyone see us and want to reckon with us. Let them see us and let your parents see and say, yes, that's my child. Let the elderly ones in the society see you and say, yes, that is our girl. That is our child. Live your life. Live a meaningful life. Live your life to the fullest. Let everyone appreciate so that even when you die, you would have laid a good example for the next generation. What is your advice to parents? Parents, my advice to the parents is that they should try as much as possible, no matter what, great time for their kids. Check them, check the kind of friends they keep. Go to schools, visit them. You see some friends, their child is in the university for like four or five years, and they will tell you, oh, my mom, they don't come to check me now. Mm -hmm. they, they believe I'm all right, I'm good. So my advice to all parents is that from time to time, we should try to check into the lives of our children to know the kind of life they are living and the kind of complaint they are giving. What can be done to stop girls from losing their pride? It's it is now left to the individual. Because some parents one what I think can be done is for the parents to continue no matter what your child is still your child. Just continue to advise them. The elderly ones in the society continue to advise them. The churches they they should try and preach preach more of this as a topic as a sermon in church, creates youth forums, teach them. And I think there's nobody that cannot change. Anybody can change, anybody can take a new leave. Thank you very much for me. Girls out there, I hope you learned a lot today. Please let's maintain our pride. Don't let us be cheap, you know. Let's let's just keep it till the right time comes. Friends Help your children, especially girls, to maintain their pride. And we will all have a brighter future. Thank you very much for watching this show. I am Shion Kushado Ushiko. Join us for another exciting package of your program, African Child. Thank you very much once again. Bye-bye.